Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We don't praise like this. We lift our hands and praise loudly, right? Lift our hands. Let us let us lift our hands. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One thing I've learned what brother always teaches us is when you praise Ten people around you should hear it, right? We are more than ten, so everyone should hear it. We are a small group here, but let us pray so loud that the heaven should be shaken, and all the heavenly beings should look at us. That how nicely they are praising. They are worthy of heaven. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So let us lift our hands and praise God in a loud voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be free Hallelujah. when you are praising. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, my Lord. I praise you. I worship you. All glory and honor to you, Lord. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lift your voices. Lift your voices. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. I praise you. I praise you. Praise you, Jesus. So we have come here as a family, right? So let us greet each other. Let us welcome each other. Say God loves you, and uh, you can shake their, their hands. And let us welcome each other. Let us uh, look around and say, "Praise the Lord! God loves you." Praise the Lord. Psalm 63, 4 says. I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us re repeat this. I will bless you as long as I live. Bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. I will lift up my hands in your name. I will bless you as long as I live. I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up your my hands in your name. I will lift up my hands in your name. Let us lift our hands high. Can we lift our hands very high? Lift our uh, legs as well and on your tippy toes and lift as high as possible and reach heaven. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 All our hands are working properly. Praise the Lord. And let us give a mighty round of applause to our Lord as we are gathered here. That's not enough. That is only a fly is being killed. Let us make it louder, louder, louder. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for bringing us here today. Hallelujah. One day, a uh, owner of the elephant was taking the elephant to the river to give a bath. So, uh, as he reached the river, his friend approached him. So, the owner of the elephant said to his friend, uh, "Can you give bath to this elephant?" I'll just I have some important work I'll just go and come back. So he left the elephant with his friend and he went away. So after one hour the owner of that elephant came back. And what is seeing that a friend of his is standing still there and staring at that elephant. He's just standing there and staring at this uh, big elephant. So this uh, owner of the elephant asked, "What happened? You didn't start giving bath to this elephant?" So this friend of his uh, said, "I am really confused. From where to start giving bath to this big, so big elephant? Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! What is this elephant in our lives? So big, big problems coming in our way: so financial problems, physical problems, emotional problems. Right? Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And we don't know where to start. So praise and worship is the beginning of." fighting this battles in our life praise the lord praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah when we praise god we worship god the problem becomes god's not ours praise the lord praise the lord that's what in exodus 14 14 says the lord will fight for you while you keep silent what is the background of the scripture who said this who said this moses moses to the israelites so they have come out of uh, egypt but uh, the mighty egyptian army is behind them and this israelites are very scared so now they will be killed or they will they will be destroyed so but moses had confidence in god so he says that lord will fight for you while you keep silent praise the lord praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah how did he have this confidence 
because he was always in the presence of God. He was always talking to God and always uh, worshiping God. He was always there with him and God was with him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when when we are praising God, we are worshiping God. God's presence is here amongst us and he reveals to us his greatness and his love for us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let us repeat this scripture. The Lord will fight for me. The Lord will fight for me while I keep silent. When I keep silent. The Lord will fight for me. The Lord will fight for me while I keep silent. When I keep silent. When I have troubles in my life, the when Lord I will fight for me. Repeat it. When I, when I while I keep silent. When I keep silent. When there is health issues, what will God do? The Lord will fight for me. God will fight for me. And while I keep silent. While I keep silent. There's no confidence in God, I think. So very silently, no confidence, just standing like this. And it's a God's uh, God's word. So there is power in this word. When we are facing this difficulty, if you're not in the presence of God, we'll not be able to say this in confidence. Is it right? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let us repeat this word. The Lord will fight for me. The Lord will fight for me. While I keep silent. While I keep silent. The Lord will fight for me. The Lord will fight for me. While I keep silent. While I keep silent. Hallelujah. 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 Let us lift our voice again and praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Praise you, my God, my King. How great are you, Lord? Thank you, Jesus. We praise you and glorify your holy name. Let your throne be let you be enthroned in our praises, Lord Jesus. Let our praises reach heaven, Lord Jesus. Let your showers of blessings come upon us as we praise you and worship you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Holy Spirit, Lord. Thank you, Father. In the case of uh, the woman uh, at the well, the Samaritan woman, you realize uh, when she was transformed, you know the story of the woman at the well, right? She, was, uh, she had come there at a very odd hour and she was uh, hiding from the people. And uh, what happened? Jesus came there, he started talking to her and he uh, revealed her all her sins and secrets. So, but she, uh, she was not transformed immediately. As the discussion was going on, the topic came of worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So uh, she realized that he's a prophet. I think he's a prophet, she thought. So then he, uh, she said, uh, our ancestors say, uh, say that we have to worship on this mountain. And uh, you Jews are telling that you have to worship in Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now what is, uh, what is the right thing to, where to worship? So Jesus answers her. So Jesus says, God is spirit and his uh, worshippers are spirit in, worship, in spirit and in truth. At that moment, she realized that this is the Messiah she is talking to. And she became bold. All her shame went off and she became bold and she went and evangelized to the entire village. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was all centered around uh, worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 So worship opens up and reveals who God is in our lives and uh, His greatness. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So are you ready to give back to the elephant in our lives? Yes. Yes? Yes. It was very meek. Say yes. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 So let us lift our hands in confidence and praise Him again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we come before you, Lord. Hallelujah. Whatever problems in our lives, Lord Jesus, we worship you. We lift our hands and we praise you. Lord. We do not care what is going around us, Lord Jesus. There might be countries falling in recession. There might be wars going around in every part of the world. But we believe in your presence. We believe in your power. We believe in your Holy Spirit to guide us in every way, Lord Jesus. We, as we worship you, Lord, we believe, Lord, your presence is going to be here, Lord. And we are going to worship you, praise you, listen to your word, and be blessed in every way, Lord. We glorify your holy name. Lift our voices, lift our voices. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord, praise you, Lord. So let us sing this beautiful hymn and realize the greatness of God and sing along with the choir. Clap hands together and worship.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, today my preaching is on anchors. You know, we have to put especially the four anchors, you know, which will help us to overcome any kind of a storms in our lives. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, you know, let me start the story behind these anchors. You know, you should know the background of it. So that's why St. Paul was going to Rome as a prisoner with 276 other prisoners. And Julius was the Roman centurion officer in that ship. And my brothers and sisters, because Paul had requested to go to Rome to meet Emperor Caesar. And now the voyage is going on. And what was happening as the ship reached uh, the island of Crete in Greece. You know, and here the weather started becoming, you know, really fierce. So what happened? So Paul gave one suggestion to the ship's captain, let's not go further because the weather is absolutely violent and we may land up losing the ship, you know, and cargo and everything, even our lives. So it's better right now we stop here for some days at least. But the century and the Roman officer who are in charge of all these prisoners did not listen to Paul. He listened to whom? The ship's captain and the owner of the ship and started sailing. Within no time, the one powerful storm started hitting the ship. That's called Northeaster. And uh, the ship was in real turbulence. And this is the time Paul is speaking. Let me get into the word of God, my brothers and sisters, what he says. Let's listen to this. Acts chapter 27, 21 to 29. After they had gone a long time without food, 
Paul stood up before them and said, Men, you should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete. Then you would have spared yourselves this damage and loss. But now I urge you to keep up your courage because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night, an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar and God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Nevertheless, we must run aground on some island. On the 14th night, we were still being driven across the Adriatic Sea. When about midnight, the sailors sensed they were approaching land. They took surroundings and found that the water was 120 feet deep. A short time later, they took soundings again and found it was 90 feet deep. Fearing that we would be dashed against the rocks, they dropped four anchors from the stern and prayed for daylight. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, I read quite long, isn't it? Praise the Lord. You see, my brothers and sisters, here, to study the ship, they put four anchors. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Otherwise, with that wind and with that storm, they would have dashed against any stone or rock and they would have perished. My brothers and sisters, that's why they put a powerful four anchors and studied the ship. Now I do not know whether you all know what is an anchor. Have you seen an anchor? Every one of you? Yeah, very good. Praise God. Hallelujah. But some of the people have not said yes. So for them, I want to show the anchors. What is an anchor? Let's watch the video. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Why I showed you this anchor, my brothers and sisters. You saw that hook? 
it's an anchor which is left from the release from the ship and it goes so deep and it reaches the seabed and it gets hooked onto the mud sand whatever it is there underneath the seabed my brothers and sisters and the more the pull more the breeze more it is pulling the more harder it goes and keeps the ship steady praise the lord hallelujah now my brothers and sisters here to steady the ship they did not put only one anchor i showed you only one anchor there are four anchors here praise the lord to make the ship 100% steady so that it will not run around and dash against us you know any rock and break so my brothers and sisters let's look into this uh, four anchors the first anchor my brothers and sisters but here i want to go one by one my brothers and sisters and uh, let's see you know i want to show you some celebrities of the world you know let's sit to watch and i'll explain to you later okay let's watch this celebrities video I showed you some of the celebrities of the world. My brothers and sisters, most of them were very young. And they are not existing. Every one of them are dead. How did they die? All of them committed suicide and died. My brothers and sisters, every one of them committed suicide and died. And my brothers and sisters, why did they die in spite of having the money in spite of having the all the pleasures of this world at their feet all the recognition all the fame all the name all the glory of the world my brother and sister they committed suicide and died and most of them were very young there are hundreds of them i showed you only few of them my brothers and sisters so today I'm driving at a point. The point is, my brothers and sisters, why these people died? Because they did not put the anchors, which I'm going to show you today. The storm and came and hit their life, my brothers and sisters. All the pledges of the world they had at their feet. But they started facing a storm in their life. At that moment, they were not able to counter the storm. And ultimately, they decided, no way we can come out of this storm. There's only one way out, they thought, committing suicide. And they thought, and they did it. My brothers and sisters, that's why I want to tell you, today's topic is a very important topic. You know, we may also 
caught up in the storms of our life. How are we going to stand strong? How are we going to face the storms? That's what is important today, my brothers and sisters. So let us listen to one by one anchors we are going to put today so that our life ship will be steady. Hallelujah. The first anchor, my brothers and sisters, I am going to show you the anchor of faith in Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The first anchor is the faith, my brothers and sisters. What is faith? Let's go into the Hebrews 11.1. 1. My brothers and sisters, let's listen to this. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Hallelujah. Can we say faith? I am seeing this chair here, the red chair here. Can I see my, say my brothers and sisters? You know, I have faith that chair is there. Can I say that? Can I say that? So that means what is seen is not faith. Hallelujah. What is unseen is faith, my brothers and sisters. Gravitational force. Are you able to see anywhere? Are you able to see? Somebody goes on top of the Burj Khalifa. You know, and Burj, uh, what is that? Yeah. And stands on that and says, I don't see the gravitational force. Let me jump. What will happen, my brothers and sisters? You see, this is what I'm trying to tell you, my brothers and sisters. Just because you don't see, you cannot say it is not existing. Hallelujah. Any of you have seen heaven? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Confidently. <laughs> okay. If you have not seen heaven, do you believe there is a heaven? That is faith. Hallelujah. Have you seen the hell, any of you? Don't say in my house there is a hell. <laughs> I've seen hell. Yes, yes. Where? In my house only. <laughs> my brothers and sisters, you know. So, my brothers and sisters, you have not seen hell, but you believe there is a hell. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, my brothers and sisters, this is called faith. You know, that is what I'm trying to drive at my brothers and sisters. Now, how do you get the faith? Okay, let's look into the word, my brothers and sisters. Romans 10, 17. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the word, the message, the word. And the message is heard through the word about Christ. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, the faith does not fall from the sky. You understand? Faith comes by hearing the word, reading the word, or meditating upon the word. You get the faith, my brothers and sisters. That's why this word of God is very, very important. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So my brothers and sisters, I want to give you a few testimonies and that will make the word stronger. You see, you know, you know what happened? Let's get into uh, one testimony. I remember few, it happened in the United States. There was a man who came for a small minor operation. During the operation, something went wrong. It was a minor operation. And he went into coma. Seven or eight doctors started reviving him and trying to revive him. No chance. Now the doctor said to the, his wife, there's no chance of your husband surviving. And even if he survives, he will be like a vegetable. You know what is the meaning of vegetable? Means kind of a useless, paralyzed state, in coma state. So he will not do. You know, it's a, you know he will be useless. What a shock to the wife. My brothers and sisters, and these doctors were working, nearly eight top doctors of America were working on him and no success. And that moment, my brothers and sisters, the wife of this man in desperate state started seeking a pastor of a church, a lady pastor. This lady pastor had the gift of knowledge. She started praying for this intention and God gave this word, my brothers and sisters, that's the word I'm going to show you. 
Psalm 118, verse 17. I will not die, but live, and will proclaim what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. Let's say it. We will all say it together. I will not die, but live, and will proclaim what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. My brother and sister, powerful word. She came one week near the bed of this man who was on the coma and proclaiming this word. Every single day, several, several times, she spent time and was proclaiming this word again and again and again in a deep coma. Patient. Nothing was happening. And she had to leave that particular country for a foreign trip because she had to preach somewhere. So she told her assistant, please go to the hospital because God has impressed upon me this particular word. You know that God will bring him to life. And this, his, her assistant started coming to the church, uh, hospital every day and spent some time. And on the 21st day, he was upset, poor fellow. And he told Lord, 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 21 days I have been coming here and proclaiming the same word. Do something, Lord. You know, a miracle happened. Suddenly this man who was in deep coma and doctor said, he may not survive, but even if survives, he'll become a vegetable. Absolutely perfect. Pulled out all the tubes which were connected to him and sat and got up from the bed and said, I will live to proclaim the glory of my God. Hallelujah. Perfectly, my brothers and sisters. I shall live and, and will proclaim what the Lord has done for me. Hallelujah. Perfect, my brothers and sisters. He got up, walked out of the hospital. Hallelujah. That's the power of the word, my brothers and sisters. You know, that's what I'm trying to tell you. The word has power. You know, my brothers and sisters, that is why whenever you are in trouble, whenever you are sick, whenever you are struggling, whenever you are in deep troubles in anywhere, areas of your life, my brothers and sisters, don't lose faith. But put the word into action by quoting the word. You see, my brothers and sisters, when I'm praying, I'm praying for hundreds and thousands of people all over the world. You know, my brothers and people call me from all over the world to pray over them for the healings. You see, my brothers and sisters, for the, you know, I remember recently one lady called me from the United States, you know, and she had a cervical cancer. You know, the doctor, they, they called the Logos Retreat Center and somebody, that brother one who knows me, he told brother, you contact this brother in the Sharjah, our brother Alfred, why don't you speak to him? And uh, so her husband called me and she said, my wife has got cervical cancer and uh, brother, can you pray? I said, okay, I'll pray. You know, my brothers and sisters, I started quoting the scriptures, you know, and I started praying for the healing of cancer. My brothers and sisters, and uh, after about uh, one week or 15 days later, I got the call from the lady, his wife, who had the cervical cancer and they have biopsy reports, everything. And there was not a trace of cancer in her body. She was completely healed. Hallelujah. All glory to Jesus. All glory to Jesus. And she sent me the testimony, my brothers and sisters, and told brother, I'm completely healed of cancer. You know, my brothers and God only can do this. That's the power of God. That's why I'm telling you what I did. I went on quoting the scriptures and went on praising God in tongues. You know, I, I pray in tongues, my brothers and sisters. You know, so I went on praying and the God did the miracle. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So my brothers and sisters, the word has tremendous power. That's why do not lose your faith. You know, that's why whenever you're in trouble, whenever there's a financial problem, whenever you're going through health-related issues, whenever you're going through any problem in your life, there are powerful scriptures. There are 8,500 scriptures in the Bible, my brothers and sisters, and everything is true for the one who believes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, let's get into Hebrews 4.12. Uh, let's get into the scripture of Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is alive and 
active sharper than any double edge sword it can penetrate even to dividing soul and spirit joints and marrow it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart my brothers and sister the word of god is not a dead word it is alive hallelujah shall we say that the word of god is alive hallelujah, hallelujah. my brothers and sisters one of my uh, you know known preacher you know one sister you know she's a preacher and uh, she was giving this testimony one day you know what she was telling you know and one there was a young man he wanted to become a priest initially and he joined the seminary but somehow he lost the interest after some time and he wanted to come out of the seminary but the family was not happy about it because they wanted him to be the priest you know and everyone was told in the family that he's going to be the priest in the family all this was much told by the family now they were so disappointed he's coming back and they knew this particular sister you know the preacher they came to her the family and told see this young man supposed to become a priest now he's walking out of that priest he doesn't want to continue and become a priest please sister can you please counsel him and this sister went and met this young man he said sister i have lost my interest i don't know he gave several reasons she said i cannot become a priest i have lost my so this sister said okay <clears throat> she st- she said cannot convince so much for this then she decided to pray you know what she did she was asking the lord to help now and uh, there was a retreat this sister was conducting and uh, sh- she told this young man brother i want to tell you something i am conducting a retreat in this particular place my only one request will you attend this requ- uh, retreat he said yes sister okay because you are conducting and i know you so well i'll come do not worry and that young man came and that is the day this sister was quoting the same scripture you know my brothers and sisters the word of god is alive and active sharper than any double edged sword and it can penetrate even dividing soul and the spirits joints and marrows my brothers and sisters she was quoting the scriptures and the power of the word of god there was a person who was bedridden for years was brought for that retreat as this lady was telling the power of the word of god and telling it can even penetrate the joints and marrows and there were places where he was paralyzed and the power of god moved on that place my brothers and sisters and this man was paralyzed for so many years he got up he got up from the bed he was kept on a bed my brothers and sisters the strength came into his body his all over the place the power of the spirit moved and my brothers and sisters this a person got up started jumping and praising god and came on the stage and gave the testimony hallelujah hallelujah my brothers shall we give a big hand to the lord hallelujah hallelujah the impact of this retreat this lady was praying for that young man's convers- conversion you know after the retreat he came to this sister he said he literally was crying and shedding tears and saying sister i thank you from the bottom of my heart today because god has opened my eyes today you know and seeing this miracle right in front of me this man was paralyzed for years got up that's the time god showed his power to me and he spared me my son why you are hesitating to serve me come back to me and now i am going to be the priest sister i am going to the seminary and joining the seminary again hallelujah hallelujah shall we give a big hand to the lord hallelujah my brothers and sisters that is the power of the word my brothers and sisters you know that is why i'm telling you the 
you have to have that faith and develop the faith in the word of god you know and also my brothers and sisters let's get into the mark chapter 9 21 to 23 jesus asked the boy's father how long has he been like this he had a dumb spirit you know he used to foam from the mouth you know and this young boy was really you know the devil is to put him in the fires and waters and try to drown him and kill him you know and uh, what happened and the father of this child came to the disciples of jesus and told him you please heal my son and they were not able to so finally he came to jesus and was complaining see i told your disciples they're not able to do anything please help now the conversation let's get on jesus asked the boy's father how long has he been like this from childhood he answered it has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. Okay? If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for the one who believes. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, see the doubt of this father? If you can... You know, my brother, then Jesus said, why you're saying, if you can, everything is the possible for those who believe. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. My brother and sister, that's the problem with many of us today. We are not believing in the mighty power of God. We are taking God through our limited mind, my brothers and sisters. You see, because for example, I cannot see beyond that curtain, you know, because my range of seeing is only up to that now. So I have a limited range. But remember, God is unlimited. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is infinite, my brothers and sisters. Let's give the God of glory a big hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we comprehend with your small, narrow mind, only small petty things and we think our God is impossible I am in financial problem today and I don't think God can solve this problem you know I don't have a job for such a long period I don't think I can get a job see my brothers and sisters remember God is the creator of the entire universe seen and unthink everything he has created right right my brothers and sisters is it difficult for God to give you one job? I'm asking you. Is it difficult for God to give a financial breakthrough? Is it difficult? Is it difficult for God to heal you? No, hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, the word of God said, Luke 137, nothing is impossible to God. Matthew 19, 26 said, what is impossible for men is possible for God. Jeremiah 32, 27 says, I am Yahweh, the Lord of all flesh. Is there anything impossible for me? The Lord is asking you a question. You see, I am Yahweh, the Lord of all flesh. Is there anything impossible for me? Nothing is impossible to God. My brothers and sisters, one touch of the Lord is enough to heal you. Hallelujah. Only one touch. My brothers and sisters, as I told you, in 1995, I was literally on the verge of death. And God touched me one touch. And I am alive till today. Hallelujah. <laughs> my brothers and sisters, I'm a living example for the glory of God. So I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, with a full of confidence and faith, for nothing is impossible to this wonderful divine mercy, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Shall we give a big hand to Jesus? <laughs> Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, Hebrews 11, 6 says, let's get into the scripture. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, that's why the first and foremost, you should believe in him. And my brothers and sisters, that, that he exists, you know, that is why that faith is very important, my brothers and sisters. 1 John chapter 5, 4 to 5, my brothers and sisters. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world. Even our 
our faith that has overcome the world hallelujah that's why my brothers say how many people in the world today you know are walking out of the catholic churches walking out of the christianity you know thinking that god doesn't exist my brothers and sisters it is very sad the churches are empty are getting empty in you know all over the world in so many countries you know that's why my brother people people are losing the you know faith in christianity that should not happen the god is there he is alive he is active my brothers and sisters you only need to come to him you only need to call upon his name and he is always there for you hallelujah hallelujah my brothers and sisters that's why you have to pray that lord let me never lose my faith in any storm that may come in my life but let me never lose faith in you hallelujah this should be your every single day's prayer hallelujah my brothers and sisters you know the second anchor let me get into the second anchor second anchor is a uh, is hope my brothers and sisters the second anchor is hope you know what is hope hope my brothers and sisters to long for to long for with expectation of obtaining hallelujah to long for hope means to long for with an expectation of obtaining hallelujah that's hope my brothers and sister that is called hope let's get into the hebrews chapter 6 verses 19 we have we have this hope as an anchor for the soul firm and secure it enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain my brother we have this hope as an anchor anchor i showed you the anchor for the soul we have to have hope my brothers and sisters if we are people without hope we are hopeless people you know my brothers and sisters it's very important i and you have hope in jesus and hope in eternity with jesus hallelujah hallelujah my brothers and sisters you know that's why it's so important first corinthians chapter 2 verses 9 says let's listen to this however as it is written what no i has seen no ear has heard and what no my human mind can conceive all the things god has prepared for those who love him if you are loving jesus god has prepared all those things for you praise the lord what i cannot see what ear has not heard what this human mind can comprehend it cannot comprehend all those things god has prepared for those who love him you cannot even imagine my brother and sister what a beautiful things what are the things are waiting for us in heaven you know that's why look at it that that's why saint paul said romans chapter 8 verse 18 let's get into that i consider that our present suffering are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed to us hallelujah all your suffering whatever suffering you may be having is nothing compared to the glory that will be revealed to us later praise the lord i'll give you a testimony you'll understand you know in the united states there was one lady was admitted to the hospital in the fourth stage of cancer she was on the verge of death and uh, her husband was a professor of a university lot of students were coming to see her comfort her in the last stage so a group of students of that professor came to the hospital and wanted to comfort this particular lady on the verge of death they entered the hospital room and after some time these youngsters you know they were shocked to see instead of them comforting this particular lady on the verge of death that lady is comforting them hallelujah you understood my brothers and sisters she is absolutely joyful she is not at all bothered on the verge of death she is she is full of radiating joy and she is comforting these youngsters and one of them asked her 
sister what is the secret behind your so much joy so much joy you know you're radiating you are on the verge of death you know but still you're radiating such joy happiness what's the matter how is it possible you know what that lady said i have so much joy because i'm waiting to meet my jesus hallelujah hallelujah you see my brothers and sisters she's waiting to meet jesus in eternity she's so expectant she wants to be with him you know so much joy so that is why she's telling don't worry don't comfort me don't bother about me i'm waiting to meet my jesus praise the lord hallelujah that's the hope my brothers and sisters she knows he hopes for eternity with jesus that's what is important for me and for you that hope i and you should have then only we will always whenever the troubles comes into our life my brothers and sisters we will not become desperate hallelujah because we know this is a temporary trouble and we are going to wait for eternity that's why saint paul you look at the life of saint paul how many problems he went through how many struggles he went through how many times prison he went through how many persecution went through he never lost his heart because he had hope in eternity to win the coveted prize praise the lord hallelujah so my brothers and sisters that's important revelation 21:4 let's get into that revelation 21:4 he will wipe every tear from their eyes there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away hallelujah in heaven my brothers and sisters there is a no kerchief no handkerchiefs okay to wipe your tears okay and uh, there is no tissues you know why because you know there is a no mourning no pain no suffering no death nothing one day i was exploring all these things nothing all these pains are not there no suffering no death no my wife was slowly listening to me and said no cooking also praise the lord <laughs> hallelujah you see my brothers and sisters so you know everything you know so god is providing for you praise the lord hallelujah so my brothers and sisters it's so important that's why jeremiah 29:11 says very clearly clearly for i know the plans for you declares the lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future hallelujah my brothers and sister again romans uh, 15:13 let's get into that may the god of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the holy spirit hallelujah see may the god of hope fill you with all joy you have to have that hope my brothers and sisters be joyful in hope romans 12 12 patient in affliction faithful in prayer hallelujah my brothers and sisters let's go into the third anchor You know we have to put all these anchors. Second anchor is over. You know my presence. Uh, first anchor, can you remember? Faith. Second anchor, hope. The third anchor, third anchor, love. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, I am going to put now <clears throat> for you. Okay, the third anchor is love. You know this is a very important my presence. Uh, like uh, let's go to First Corinthians chapter thirteen, one to seven and thirteen. Let's get into that. St Paul says here if i speak in the tongues of men or of angels but do not have love i am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal if i have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge and if i have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love i am nothing if i give all i possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that i may boast but do not have love i gain nothing love is patient love is kind it does not envy it does not boast it is not proud it does not dishonor others it is not self seeking it is not easily angered it keeps no record of wrongs love does not delight in evil 
but rejoices with truth it always protects always trusts always hopes always perseveres hallelujah my brothers and sisters the love has such power and now verse 13 says now these three remain faith hope and love but the greatest of is this is love hallelujah what a powerful scripture my brothers and sisters that is what i am trying to tell you today this my brothers and sisters the love is the most important every gift you know god can give us i remember a beautiful testimony of a very close friend of mine we were in the school together and later on uh, he went further and uh, then he did his engineering and went to kuwait you know what happened uh, he was uh, very athletic uh, and uh, he used to win a lot of prizes. He was a very well-built, very handsome, very good-looking fellow. Everything was and very rich also. <clears throat> family was a very rich family. Every way he was, everything he had, you know, one day. And he got married to a wonderful girl. And he went back to Kuwait here as, but they used to have a very regular parties and uh, weekends and going to the outings and beaches and all kinds of things of the flesh. And one day, Suddenly, the brain started getting some kind of a pain in the, you know, brain, you know, in the head. And he went for a test, my brother and sister. One day, he collapsed. And then, you know, doctors uh, realized, you know, that's a very serious case, you know, of the brain. Some kind of a disease of the brain. And the blood circulation and the doctor said, there is no chance for his, uh, you know, complete revival. He will be vegetable for his life. What a young man just got married, not even one year, and uh, doctors are telling he's going to be a vegetable for life. My brother and sister, this young man was in terrible, desperate state. You know, his wife's name is Anita. He told, and he was so desperate, he told, because he felt, and there's no life for that girl with me, because I'm young, there are no children so far, and uh, if I live in this way state, you know, and all her, her life also will be desperate. So in that state, Brian, you know, he was, uh, uh, you know, awake uh, in the sense that means uh, he's paralyzed type, you know, completely, body-wise, you know, but he could speak. You know, he said, Anita, leave me. You know, there's no point continuing your life with me, leave me. You know, my brother and sister, what she said? She said, Brian, you are my husband. Whatever happens doesn't matter. I will stand with you as long as you live. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, what a powerful way that Brian says that uh, moment that he was got a, such a relief. My brothers and sisters, then he had a major two operations and the operations were successful. And you won't believe, and, uh, I met Brian just uh, four months back during my son's wedding in India. And uh, I met Brian and my brothers and sisters and can you believe at the age of 28 or something like he had got married till today he is hale and hearty and working as a manager for a big firm in kuwait and doing so well shall we give a big hand to the lord hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah my brothers and sisters that love of anita in spite of the storm came to the life she could have walked away from him you know, she had all the choice because she knew there will not be a life for her with him. You know, if in a vegetable state, somebody in a paralyzed state, if he lives for the whole life, just imagine a young girl's life. But she said, Brian, I will not leave you. I love you, Brian, and I will stand by you. Hallelujah. My brother and sister, her faith, her love, and brought Brian back. Hallelujah. My brother and sister, that's why Colossians 3, 14 says very clearly, listen to this. My brothers and sisters, and uh, John 15, 4, 12 to 13. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Again, the Lord is a greater love as no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. John 15, 12 to 13. My brothers and sisters, Colossians 3, 14 says, and over all these virtues, put on love which binds them all together in perfect unity. Hallelujah. The last one, my brother, fourth anchor. Fourth anchor, your relationship with God. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, you know, you, re, you know the story of Job, right? I need not have explained to you. Job lost everything, right? He lost 
all his money he lost his children he lost a property he lost his health everything he lost you know my brothers and sisters and the situation was a very critical one for job job 121 let's look into that word you know naked i came from my mother's womb naked i will depart the lord gave and the lord has taken away may the name of the lord be praise how can you say that word you know my brother how many people live go away from god when there is a, some some storms comes into the life you know what a storm he lost his family he lost his wealth lost his health lost everything even his wife said something listen to this what wife is said at that moment when he got that uh, wounds on his body and smelling and uh, <coughs> rotten smell was coming this is what his wife said his wife said to him job chapter 2 verse 9 to 10 are you still maintaining your integrity for the to the lord curse god and die his own wife said curse god and die but what is his answer my brothers and sisters let's look at uh, look into that he replied job 2 9 to 10 you are talking like a foolish woman shall we expect good from god and not trouble in all this job did not sin in what he said hallelujah shall we expect only good from god not trouble only good you are expecting or praising god when the trouble comes you will run away from god no way see my brother and sister why god job did not run away from god because he knew god hallelujah he had a relationship with god that's important my brothers and sisters you know look at the uh, life of uh, joseph joseph is a uh, brothers abandoned him in a, you know in the well you know they wanted to kill him you know and then where was he he was a slave he was sold to potiphar he was a slave and on top of that my brothers and sisters the third thing he was in prison for no fault of his he could have been so angry with god did he leave god and go i'm asking you no he stayed back he was faithful to god in spite of every persecution you know why because he had a relationship with god hallelujah my brothers and sisters that is what i'm trying to drive at my brothers and sisters today so that's why i and you should know god personally You know, for example, my brother says, I'll give an example. You know, your government department, for example, ID card. You have all ID cards, right? Yeah. ID card, you know, when they are making ID card, they take a lot of details of you, right? They have a lot of details in that. Inside your name is there, your family names may be there, your children name may be there, your job title may be there, what your job may be there, every details are there. But if the ID department people, if they come in front of you, are they recognize you? I'm asking you. Will they recognize you? they have no all facts about you but they don't recognize you but your dog you may be having a dog i don't know how many of you have dogs here <laughs> but your dog you know my brothers and sisters maybe you are having a you know every day you are with him the dog the dog is with you and if you if it finds with a big crowd is there in the street you know will, will that dog recognize you or not recognize you or not you want to show show you i want to show you a video how they recognize okay let's watch it <laughs> praise god yeah hallelujah the owner had left the dog for some time you know means he had gone some trip he's just coming back how much the love and recognition of the owner praise the lord 
Hallelujah. There are so many videos of the animals left them seven years, 15 years like that. But they went to the jungle and they called out the name they came. My brothers and sisters and hug them. And such videos are tear-jerking videos, my brothers and sisters. If you see on the internet, you know, on the Google and such videos are there. You know, that's what I'm trying to tell you. They don't know facts about you, but they know you. Because they know you personally. Because that relationship, what you're developed with that animal. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In the same way, my brothers and sisters, you have to develop that relationship with God, my brothers and sisters. It's not enough if you know about the name of Jesus. It know, okay, I'm reading the Bible. Yes, I read the Bible. Yes, I'm uh, going to the church. Yes, I go to the church. My brothers and sisters, many people come to the church, many people, but they don't know Jesus personally. Hallelujah. That's the relationship you have to develop with Jesus. Hallelujah. So my brothers and sisters, that's why the three things, reasons of, uh, it gives reasons for us confidence in Jesus. So since Jesus is the Lord of all, he is the Lord of storm of life that come our way. He is the Lord of everything. That's why any storm comes into our life, he's the Lord of the storm also. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You need not have to worry, my brother and sister. He is in control and will work out everything for your good. Hallelujah. That's why Romans 8.20, though, see the word Romans 8.28 says very clearly, my brothers and sisters, it's very important. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. The third thing, my brothers and sisters, you know, even the Paul was in a terrible storm, but Jesus sustained him. Praise the Lord. He was in a terrible storm, right? He was in prisons. He was in all persecution. They were trying to kill him. Everything, such a storm, but God sustained him in the same way. When you have relationship, when you have put these four anchors, which I told you, then what will happen? God will sustain you. Shall we give a big hand to the Lord? Hallelujah. I just want to ask you, what are the four anchors I told you? Can you just name them? Faith, Faith hope, hope, love, love relationship. relationship. Hallelujah. You are perfect. Praise the Lord. I'm so happy. You have learned in such a short way, short time. You are so perfectly. Shall we rise up? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we give a lift our hands and praise God? Hallelujah. Ula Mashila, Labba, Hala Mashila. Jesus, 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 who call upon your name. Who call upon the name of Jesus. There is a power in the name of Jesus. Ula Mashila. Ula Baba 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 Jesus, you are touching your people. Ula Mama 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 Mahala Mashila. Ula Mama 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 Mahala. Jesus, you are touching your people today. You are going to deliver your people. You are going to heal your people. You are going to bless your people. You are going to anoint your people. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's worship this beautiful hymn. You remember today is the feast of Corpus Christi. Hallelujah. The body and blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, the transubstantiation is, takes place when the Eucharist of prayers are recited in the Mass, my brothers and sisters. The ordinary bread, my brothers and sisters, the body of Jesus Christ and the wine becomes the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So my brothers and sisters, how wonderful and merciful our God is. He has come to us with that communication and with the love for us, my brothers and sisters, the small piece of bread. So we should so much thank Him and worship Him. Praise Him as we sing the beautiful hymn. And let's worship Him right now. Thank you, Jesus. 
and sisters this is the time surrender your life to Jesus he's here to bless you and heal you he's here to deliver you from all the affliction he's here to set you free from all the bondages you may be in so today repent for your sins close your eyes talk to Jesus and tell him Lord set me free today there are areas I hurt you Lord there are areas Lord Jesus I've done things wrong in your sight Lord forgive me Lord wash me with thy holy blood Lord you shed on the cross for me my Jesus cleanse and purify me my Lord speak to Jesus repeat after me this small prayer of repentance Lord Jesus Lord Jesus I am a miserable sinner I am a miserable sinner I am unworthy I am unworthy to stand in your holy presence stand in your holy presence Forgive me Lord Jesus Forgive me Lord Jesus Wash me Wash me with your precious blood with your precious blood and sanctify me and sanctify me Lord Jesus Lord Jesus I confess I confess with my mouth with my mouth and believe in my heart and believe in my heart that you are my Lord that you are my Lord that you are my Savior you are my Savior send forth your Holy Spirit send forth your Holy Spirit upon me upon me right now right now and change my life and change my life let me not let me not be the same again be the same again thank you Jesus thank you Jesus praise you Jesus hallelujah hallelujah blessing the beautiful hymn it's your blood that cleanses me.
Right now the pain in your body is leaving. Ula ma 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 hala ma shila. Diabetes be healed. Ula ma 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 hala ma shila. Arthritis be healed in the name of Jesus. Liver problem be healed in the name of Jesus. Cough, cold, fever be healed in the name of Jesus. Uterus problem be healed. Ula ma 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 mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ of us. Nazareth, every one of you here, any sickness of you, be healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Let's invite the Holy Spirit with a beautiful name. Holy Spirit, come with your fire.
I believe the Lord has touched every one of us in a special way. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shall we give a big hand to the Lord? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God is going to bless you. Shall we sing the final hymn and give glory to God? Let's all join in. Shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy and all the trees of the feet will clap, will clap their hands. All the trees of the fields will clap their hands. The trees of the fields will clap their hands. The trees of the fields will clap their hands. For you go out with joy. You shall go out with joy. He let forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy. All the trees of the fields will clap, will clap their hands. All the trees of the fields will clap their hands. The trees of the fields will clap their hands. The trees of the fields will clap their hands. For oh, you go out with joy. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy. And all the trees of the fields will clap, will clap their hands. And all the trees of the fields will clap their hands. The trees of the fields will clap their hands. The trees of the fields will clap their hands. For you go out with joy. For you go out with joy. For you go out with joy. Hallelujah. We go out with joy. Praise the Lord.